What is going on? YouTube, fitness, family. We are back after being sick. Still don't my voice back, but I wanted to bring you guys the perfect chest workout. So, I know you guys are thinking like, what does the perfect chest workout even mean? I'm gonna be running you through not only the exercises, but also the modality. So, how we're performing the exercises, the stretch, the time under tension, the sets, the reps. So, hope you guys love this video. I am absolutely excited about this. I used to have a terrible chest. Now I feel like my chest is one of my strong suits. I think it's due to the style of training that I've utilized, moved away from more of the heavier pressing, and done more of the things I'm gonna show you guys today. So without further ado, let's hit this workout. All right, we're starting off with pec deck. I'm sure a lot of you guys were thinking I would start with a heavier compound press to start my workout, but the reason I don't do this and I'm flipping it on its head is because I wanna pre-exhaust with something that's very safe for my chest. A machine fly, you're probably not gonna get injured, right? You never see people like carrying their pack on a machine fly. And the reason for that is because it's a lighter movement as compared to like, let's say a heavy bench press or a heavy dumbbell press. It allows you to really open up the tissue and really push a lot of blood flow and warmth into your chest before you start with some of the more compound movements. So I really like to start with a fly. You're probably all also asking, did I start with a ton of mobility work before this workout? Absolutely not. For me, personally, I like to warm up with the actual movement patterns that I'm doing. So I'm gonna do two to three warm up sets with this pec deck before I really work into my working sets. So one of the big cues I tell people is start back. So people are like, whoa, you start with the handle that far back. It's almost in the farthest back position. And the reason for that is because I wanna open up the chest. If you are hitting just flies here, you're only hitting a portion of your pec. What I wanna see you do is really open up every rep and reach back. And what that's gonna do is a couple things. Number one is it's going to recruit more tissue because you're using more range of motion. Number two is it's gonna keep that tissue longer and healthier because you're working it under load in that length and position so it gets used to being stretched. And so that's why I don't do that much static stretching because within my workouts, I'm actually stretching that tissue in that farthest opening, open up position. And so I don't really have to worry about stretching because this for me, like for most people, I feel like it's their shoulders gonna get ripped out of their sockets, but I haven't done any warm up, and that feels very comfortable for me all the way back there because of the fact that I work in these length of positions every single time I train. And so what I wanna do is arch the back, really open that chest up, let the pec minor stretch. And then instead of exploding out, I wanna consciously, see how I drop the shoulder blades back and I consciously press to the chest, so I'm not here, because that's gonna lose the contraction of the chest. What I wanna do is keep it, and on a fly, I'm not worried as about as much top end strength. I will eventually probably top out this machine by my top working set, but that's because I've taken so much time to open up and get my chest strong. Because a lot of times when people press, there's a lot of ancillary movers, right? You can use your triceps, you can actually use your lats, so when people do heavier pressing, they actually can push a lot through the lats. One of the top guys in the world that does like basically one of the heaviest bench presses, he's actually got two torn packs. And because he uses, he's honest, he uses more of his lats to press out. So a lot of times when you're pressing, you might be using more of your triceps, more of your front delts, more of your lats than your actual chest. With this, it puts your chest on an island. So it's not really, other than maybe biceps and front delts, I'm not really able to use very much complete this movement. So form cues are arch back, open up that chest, big range of motion. And you don't want to start off with that huge stretch if you're not used to it. So start here and then kind of get more and more used to that stretch and a lot with a light weight. And then as you go heavier, you want to keep reaching back and getting more and more stretch to the chest. Good peak contraction squeezing for a good one count and then really slow on that eccentric, really eccentrically loading the chest, which is going to be really important for growing a really developed chest so really don't i don't want to ever see you go out and then let it go you're letting go of the most important part of the movement is that eccentric so good control squeeze flow on that eccentric i'm going to go for 12 to 15 reps on this warm-up set and then i'm just going to slowly modulate up the weight so i get to my first true working set i'll show you guys what that looks like all right first working set i'm going to shoot for 12 to 20 reps the reason i say 12 to 20 because i really want to push Pretty close at one to three reps in reserve. So what that means is if somebody put a gun to your head, you'd have to be able, you'd be able to do like one to three more reps. And I think people, a lot of the times, overestimate this in the sense of 
They're like, oh yeah, I was definitely one RIR. But like, if I came up, I was like, here's a million dollars if you do 10 more reps, I guarantee you most of you guys will be doing 10 more reps. So retrain your brain of like, what is true failure? And the more you do that, the more you can utilize this, this range of motion, time and retention modality to its fullest extent. Because people are always like, oh, if you train like that, you're not training hard. It's like, no, if you train really hard, but you gotta train your brain to really understand what are those progressive failure points. So what I'm gonna do is I got about 240 on the stack here. And the form, as you will see, will not change for my warm-up reps. So as I go up and wait, my reps aren't gonna get sloppy. They're just getting heavier. So I'm pushing more what's called stimuli into the tissue. So by adding weight is one way of many to get more stimulus into the tissue, but it's not the only way. I think that's the misconception is it's only reps and weight. You're either doing more volume or more weight, but how are you performing your reps? Are you doing good time and attention like this? Are you slowing down your eccentric? Are you getting a big ass stretch? What is your range of motion like? What are your rest times like? Are you using any intensity techniques such as partial reps or supersets? And we'll get into a lot of these techniques during this workout. But that's why I want you guys to expand your thinking beyond, oh, it's either just how many reps you're doing or how much weight you're doing because how the reps are performed can be very different. As you can see here, these, if you did this with probably one half of what you're currently doing with your flies, this would torch you because you're used to doing your reps a lot faster. So when you, when you challenge your tissue and slow down your reps and increase your range of motion, it'll feel like it's like tearing because it's so much more intense than if you were just to go, oh, I'm gonna do 10 reps. Let me just bang through it, get from A to A to B. That's really not what you want to do when you're training. You want to really maximize every rep. Oh, fuck. Oh. Burn on those is freaking nuts. It's not about throwing the weight around. You can see at that last rep, I probably, realistically, Phil, if you were to hold up like $1,000, like with that exact form, but that's a caveat, with that form, do one more rep. I probably pulled it off. Maybe it wouldn't look so pretty. So I wouldn't technically be able to do it correctly, but that's what I want to see from you guys is don't just do your set be like, oh yeah, do my 10 reps. So uh, let me check my Instagram story, see how they're performing. Um, no, that's not how you fucking need to train. Train with the mentality of each and every set, treat it like your last because no, no set should be throwaway sets. People always treat their fly sets as throwaway sets. No, absolutely fucking not. Treat your fly sets just as important as your bench press. What's gonna make your chest big is a conglomerate effort of every single exercise. And what's really important is acclimation, right? So if you do the same exercise over and over again, you're not going to necessarily progress. But if you change the way you perform them, more range of motion, more time retention, switch up your exercises, create new stimuli for the tissue. That's what's gonna cause you to grow. So stop thinking like, oh, well flies are my warm up so I can get to my bench press. Like, sure, it's cool to have a big bench. I'm not saying don't strive for that, but that's how much it's gonna make you have a big chest. And that's why I want you guys to understand. Okay, so this is my next working set. I'm gonna teach you guys an intensity technique like I was talking about. It's not always just reps times weight. This is an intensity technique it's called partial reps. So when you get to failure, with your full reps, instead of throwing it, because I'm sure you're seeing people, or you've done it yourself, where you do a fly and you're like, oh, I'm fucking dead. Instead of just like getting a partial rep with good form, you toss the shoulders. See this? When you do this, it's gonna go all into your bicep and your front delt. It's gonna lose into your chest. So you see here, your chest is nice and open up. Here you're collapsing. You've almost got no impetus in your chest. So what I want you to do, when you get to failure, instead of throwing it, Start doing partials from the back. Open up that chest and focus, control. Go out to as far as you can go. And I'm gonna hit five to seven partial reps at the end of the set when I can't no longer hit full reps. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So we got 260 on the stack, so two away from the high base position. Let's see how many, I would like to just get six to 10, perfect form all the way into the middle before I start my partials. All right, lock it. Oh. Oh. Go 
Come on, Eric. Oh, oh it's seven. Let's try to see if I get one more. Oh, no, I don't have it. So now I'm gonna go right into my partials. So arch that back, keep that chest nice and open, and go as far as I can while keeping it in the chest. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, it's so brutal, dude. But see, that's like, I'm trying to explain to you guys, just because you're not lifting top end weight for three reps, five reps, sure, that's the sexiest stuff. Like my chest is so fucking on fire because I'm focusing on intensity, intentionality, and keeping the connection in the chest as opposed to thinking, oh, I need to do 15 reps. No, get that out of your head. Think about how much you're utilizing the tissue, how much is the stimuli, how hard are you training, and obviously how safe are you training. This is very safe. I'm not gonna hurt myself. Even though I have almost a whole stack, everything is very controlled, very methodical. And that's what's gonna help you. And you see, also, those partials are in the most stretched position. So, what that's called is stretch mediated hypertrophy. And I know I use this term a lot in my training. It's scientifically proven to put load on the tissue in that stretch position is going to drive a boatload of hypertrophy, meaning growth, into your muscle. So, don't sleep on the stretch position. Everybody wants to do partials in the most contracted position? No, you're already dead. You can't get full contraction. So go back, hit those partials in that stretch position, I guarantee you, you'll feel like your chest is gonna freaking explode. I've trained with people, have never trained like this, they're like, it's the best chest work I've ever had in my life. And it's not because the exercises, they've done this before, they've done a pack deck, but it's how they're doing it. Changing your mindset on how you're performing the movements, and that's what's gonna make the biggest difference in how much you grow. All right, we're gonna move on to an outward fly, drop set in, basically it's a mechanical drop set, down to do a downward press. So what we're gonna do is start off with our fly movement. So we're really gonna open up the chest, we're gonna step out, good stride here. So you wanna really open up, stretch at the back, and then we're gonna squeeze through, you're gonna straighten the arms in the middle up and really squeeze the chest, slow on that eccentric, really reach up, push the palms down towards the floor, get the biggest stretch you feel comfortable with while keeping it in the chest, drive down through, squeeze, keep that chest nice and open. So you don't wanna roll over it, keep it open here. So we're gonna go slow on the eccentric, big stretch at the top, squeeze through. So this is our fly portion of the superset. We're gonna go for eight to 10 here. Really good squeezing. You really see I'm pushing the hands together, slow on the eccentric, really milking it. Turn the palms down towards the floor, going up towards the top of the cable, a little body English. Squeeze. I would say remove the body English if it's not a movement pattern you're quite comfortable with yet, because I want you to be really strict to start. And then you can work that in as you get more comfortable. Really keep in the chest. We're gonna reset, shake it out. So we already have a huge burn. We're already on fire. And then, we're going to go in right into a downward press. So we're gonna take these, come over the top, and now we're gonna be pressed. So we're gonna turn the palms back towards the wall behind us and press through. So pressing is gonna be a little bit inherently easier than flies. So it's a little bit of a mechanical drop set. What that means is we're taking a harder movement pattern mechanically and putting it first and then going into the press, which we can use a little bit more of an elbow bend and more of that pressing modality, which is gonna be easier than opening up and hitting a fly. So we're gonna hit these closer to failure. A little body English, squeeze, open chest, keep that chest nice and tall. Oof. Go for three to four more. Oof. Oh man, so that one's terrific because you get the benefit of the flies, huge range of motion, super set, right into a press. So I don't have to use as much weight for my presses. I'm already pre-fatigued from those big open fly movements. So 
Really, really terrific superset to add to your arsenal. Okay, so technically fourth exercise, so that was two exercises in one. We're gonna do a mid to lower chest modified fly. It's one of my favorite movements. So last one we had it set all the way at the top. We're gonna drop this down. I want you to put the cable at about shoulder height. So just kind of just put it here, measure it, and then I've got mine set it in this cable machine 25. So what I want to do is have this here. So what I'm going to do is turn my palm supinated. So this is pronated, this is supinated. What this is going to allow me to do is really open up to that pec minor and then drive that inner chest in the bottom of my rep. That's where a lot of people really struggle to get growth is here and then upper chest. So we're going to do upper chest next, but this is a really powerful movement. So what I want you to do is set up. I want you to step out away from the machine. So kind of similar how we did that first set palm is going to turn open so it's a little bit of a hybrid between a press and a fly so it's going to be almost a supinated press and then we're going to turn our hands into a v shape at the top of the rep so we're going to come back stretch as much as possible while keeping the impetus in the chest then we're going to push out and turn the hands into a v shape so you see that right here v Slow, chest is nice and open. We're gonna lean back, stretch that chest open, pushing that out to a V, keeping the chest nice and proud. So we're not here, we're here open. I'm gonna push a little lower than you think you need to, so aim low. We're gonna aim nice and low here, squeeze. Big stretch, open, push through. Oh, squeezing. So it's probably a new movement pattern for you guys, so definitely start light. I really wanna create that mind muscle connection. This is gonna be a little lighter than the last movement pattern we did. I have it on 80, I had that last one 100 for reference. So about 80%. Ugh, so I'm gonna take this to about failure and then I'm gonna hit some partials like I did in that first exercise. Ugh, keep it in the chest, shoulders back. Ugh. 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 So another thing worth noting is when I went for those partials, I close my eyes because there's a lot of distractions at the gym, right? Whereas if you can close your eyes and actually connect with that muscle group, especially when you're so close to failure, where you're more likely to let the impetus fall out of that target muscle group, what I do is close my eyes and really connect. I can feel it right here. I know it seems super dumb and like, oh, my muscle connection, close your eyes, connect with the movement. But like, at the end of the day, the more like, mental kind of impetus you're putting into a movement pattern, the more you're gonna get out of it. Think about it like, have you ever, ever read a book? You're reading and you like read a whole page and you're like, mind's not in it. And you're like, oh my God, I just read like three pages of the book and I didn't absorb anything. It's like that. If you come and train, you're just like, oh, oh shit, I just got to 10 reps. And you weren't even like, your mind was like over there looking at some girl out across the gym. Like, you're not actually working out. You're not actually training, you're working out. You're just moving weight from A to B. So lock into your exercise, really feel the muscle group you're trying to target. I guarantee you it's going to really accelerate the quality of your workouts, but also the gains you're getting from the workouts. All right, so next movement, as promised, upper chest. One of the hardest things that most people love connecting with, and this is the perfect movement pattern to put before our next movement, which I'll hold off on telling you guys what it is right now, but it's a great primer to get the upper chest firing. So. What this is going to be seated in climb fly. So the reason I'm using a military bench is to keep it really, really isolated in the upper chest. So I'll show you guys how to set up. I want you guys to put this right in the middle in front of a narrow cable. Ideally, if you only have wide cables, totally fine. That was a point I wanted to make. If you guys only have the wider setup, totally fine. Narrow is my preference just because that vector of force is coming from a little tighter, but we can make it work. So we're going to do this is we're gonna sit, we're gonna walk it around, sit on this military. I want you to push your butt out slightly and wrap your shoulder blades over the top of that bench. I want you to put your feet out in front. I want you to lean back and I want you to roll the shoulders up, look up at the ceiling. And then I want you to fly with slightly bent elbows up into about where your, where your hands come to about your chin level. So slight elbow bend at the back of the rep, big stretch, push consciously with your upper chest and squeeze the top of the rep. So this is not meant to be a super heavy movement. 
I got 60 on there. So to, in reference to what I was doing before, I was doing 80 on those mid chests, about 100 on those first plies I was doing. So this, I've got about 60%. Oof. It's really controlled. The military press, this allows us from using a lot of momentum, keeps that posture nice and upright. Oh, really try to keep that chest nice and open. Gonna go for 10 to 12. Oh. 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 So, as you can see, when I got to failure, instead of throwing it, you can see I used that length and position, and I didn't try to force it and take over with my front delt. Like, all I feel is chest right now. No front delt, no bicep. And the reason for that is because when I got to that failure point, I was just like, you know what? Keep it in the chest. Don't let it run into the front delt. So, run this for three to four sets. Really getting that upper chest fired up. What I'm gonna do is counterintuitive to what you might think. Every single set, I'm gonna keep the rest time short on these and go 10 pounds lighter every single set. So I'm technically making the weight lighter, but my form's gonna improve every single set because that's almost like a reverse pyramid. I'm starting with my heaviest when I have the most juice. I go down and down and down so my form can continue to improve or at least stay the same as I keep the rest time short and keep a really good blood flow. The upper chest is a slightly smaller, you know, impetus, smaller muscle group, smaller part of the chest. So. Yeah, gonna cut down the rest time and just go 10 pounds lighter. So let's keep cranking these. Last exercise, which you're gonna be surprised about, is my more compound press. I prefer Smith Machine over barbell for a number of reasons. Number one is the safety control. If I'm gonna be doing a lot of time under tension, even if I get to failure, I can just rack it right away. No problems. It has the progressive, you know, marks here where I can just dump it. So that's the number one. Number two is just like, with this type of training, it allows me for a lot of control and I'll show you on these reps. So I literally just started with a 45, not really focusing on going super heavy on these. As you can see, I'm on a pretty steep incline because I really want to hit that top shelf of my chest. So I'm not going to go on a shallow incline to get more mid chest. I want to be here, arch the back, pop those shoulders down and in. I'm going to go nice and slow and negative. Tuck those elbows, touch the chest, push out so we're not gonna we're gonna utilize that pause we're gonna disable the use of momentum and drive out through the chest so a lot of people will either shorten their reps or they'll just go down and pop out like i could hit fucking probably 50 to 100 reps like this but like this pause out I'll probably only hit 15 to 20. And since my chest is already so pre-fatigued from the rest of the workout, I'm gonna get a lot of hypertrophy here because that tissue's already so taxed. But really what we're trying to do is hit those progressive failure points. And if you're already so fatigued, I'm not saying go run a marathon, I'm saying fatigue the tissue that you're actually trying to hit in that workout. If I got three more. Mm. Pause. Really feel that upper chest stretch. Squeeze. One more. Oh. Oh, and that's already really, really good burn. And you can see how much already pump I have in that upper chest. You probably see it better in the mirror. So you see that with the lighting on it. Just that fullness. I never had that when I was doing so much like focused on strength and barbell pressing. My numbers were going up. Well, I noticed my chest wasn't growing because I was using so much more of that momentum, using my lats, using my triceps. You can see I have very dominant arms, very dominant delts, so they can inevitably take over a movement pattern very easily. So what I wanted to do was really slow down my movement patterns, understand how can I really maximize the stimuli and impetus on my chest and doing movements like this really help that. So 
You don't have to eliminate pressing out of your repertoire. And even if you love barbell pressing, keep doing it. But do it like this, I challenge you. Cut the weight in half, add tempo, add a pause. Guarantee your chest will be on fire, it will be sore, it'll grow because you might be using it really to its fullest capacity for the first time ever because you're so used to this like by any means necessary to get the weight up to going from that it's like holy shit i'm actually pressing with my chest fuck like my chest is actually sore it's burning so that's something you can really apply not just this this myth and incline but also to your bench press your incline bar press your dumbbell pressing so this is the perfect workout not because of the exact exercise i'm using but more because of the technique that i'm teaching you guys pre-exhaustion, intensity techniques, stimuli, these are all gonna supersede the actual exercise selection of your workout.